Welcome to eLearning Models for the WebStat. This is model number six, and in this module we'll discuss how to connect to your WebStat, to your Web Security or your JACE controller using the 9-pin serial port on the bottom of your controller. This is extremely helpful to find out the IP address that's currently on your, your controller if you do not know it. This also makes it possible on the WebStat to activate port two. By default, when you get a WebStat, only network jack one is active. In order to activate port two, you have to use the serial shell mode um, on this nine pin connector. So the first thing you wanna do is to remove the cover off your WebStat, and it will look something very similar to this. It'll give you two um, different options here. You wanna change the jumper that's on the bottom two pins and change it on the left two pins to go into serial shell mode. Also, make sure that your WebStat is powered off. The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a null modem cable. Now this is not a normal serial cable. These are the nine pin cables. It needs to be a uh, female to female null modem cable and it can be ordered from Amazon using this part and it's only five, you know, five dollars and 44 cents. Uh, but you have to have a null modem cable for this to work. The next thing you're gonna need, if you do not have a serial port on your computer, most new laptops simply don't come with serial ports anymore. They've gone away. And so if you don't have a serial port, the nine pin connector, then you need to order a USB to serial converter. And this can also be ordered through Amazon using this um, part number and that's the price. Once you get this part, you have to install the driver, plug in your adapter, and it will um, assign a, a port number to your adapter. And this is very important. So let's go ahead and tell you where to find the port number. Click on the Windows icon in the bottom left corner, type in device, and choose device manager. And then from there, um, open up ports and USB to serial bridge. That's my adapter, it's on COM3. If you're not sure what it is, go ahead and unplug it and, you, and you'll see it disappear from your list of ports. If you plug it back in, there it is, COM3. So now with that information, COM3, you can move forward. The next thing you're gonna need is the software in order to connect to the WebStat. The software is called PuTTY. Unless your computer is old enough, a Windows XP or Vista machine might have HyperTerminal still. Um, but if you do not have HyperTerminal on your computer, go to PuTTY.org. When you get to the main screen of PuTTY, um, click on the Here button to download the software. The download page gives you several options, but the one you'll need to use is putty.exe. Then from there, go to your downloads folder and find the actual file, putty.exe, and click on it. And choose run. Now once you're here, you have to configure it so it can talk to your web stats. So the first thing you want to do is to click on serial. And then click on serial down here and change your COM to COM3. This is the adapter um, COM port that you have plugged in. Next, change the speed to 115200, eight data bits, one stop bit, none parity, and none on flow control. Go back to session, type in WebStat to save your session. So the next time you open up PuTTY, you don't have to enter in all the details, you just click on, on WebStat. Choose WebStat and open, and your screen opens up, very much like a DOS prompt box. The next thing you want to do, making sure that your null modem cable is connected to the serial port on the bottom of your WebStat, and also connected to your USB to a serial adapter. Make sure your cables are connected. Then you add power to your WebStat. It takes a, a minute or two for it to log um, completely in, so just be patient during that process. During the login process, you'll see TCP IP network status come up. Network Jack 1, which is on the right, is called ENO. EN0. And if it did have an IP address, it would be right here. Jack number two on the left, if it's active, the IP address would be right here. And so that's where you can find out your IP address if you have one currently in your controller. 
Now, if you don't, you need to log in and make that change now. Now, the username and password cannot be posted on the internet. It's simply, it's a secret password that we just don't hand out to everybody. And so you'll need to contact your distributor um, or your, uh, or your um, Honeywell representative to find out this information. I'll go in and type mine now. Now keep in mind as you're typing the password, it doesn't show up. If you mess up, just hit enter and enter it again. Once you reach your main screen, you want to choose update network settings. So type in number two and enter. And this is where you can name your controller. For this um, demo, let's just call this Sunnyside. And if you happen to be um, part of the LDS Church tying into its network, you want to use LDSChurch.org. Except for you notice I spelled it wrong. Not the end of the world, we can always come back and fix it. Um, you'll also need to enter in the proper DNS server. Uh, there's two of them, a primary and a secondary. And this information you can get from calling global support. You will also need to get your router information from global support as well for your building. So you'll need to contact your IT group in order to get this information. Once you've got your router entered, you can enter in the IP address that you want to give your webstat or your controller and type it in here. So for this building, let's just say it is 10.172.4. 44.22 and we'll say the subnet is 255.255.192 okay and we do want to enable port 2 you'll notice that this uh, got a little bit truncated or messed up um, this just explains that the the webstat startup is complete it's not a big deal we'll come back and make sure that our information was entered correctly but if you want to activate port 2 on a webstat type in Y. This is the only place you can do it. And I always make it a habit of uh, adding an address to port 2 on my web, web stats, web security, and JSONs. This is kind of a back door. It's a way to plug into the unit by walking up directly and plugging into it. I always make mine 192.168.1.120. The subnet of 255.255.255.0. Do you want to save any changes? Yes. Now we want to make sure that everything was entered correctly because it looks like I typed some things wrong. So let's go back into two again. Sunnyside is correct, but that is incorrect. So type in ldschurch.org and we'll just say that that's the DNS for now, secondary DNS. The router information you get from global support or your IT group, your IP address that you uh, want to use on your web stat or your controller, your subnet, that's not right. 255.255.255.192. And if you want to check um, port 2 again, hit yes. Whoops. Um, if you enter it wrong, you can always hit backspace, but it doesn't delete anything. You can see how those, uh, it's just odd. Anyway, um, um, 192.168.1.120 is correct. And the submit is correct. And we want to save the settings, yes. Enter to continue. And then after it's all entered correctly, go ahead and hit reboot. Are you sure? And hit yes. At this point, while it's um, rebooting, now go back to your jumper and move it back to normal operation on the bottom two pins. At this point, you can log or go back to your putty and you can exit out of it. Yes, I do want to close. You can remove the null modem cable from the bottom of your controller. And it takes about five minutes for it to reboot. Okay, while you're waiting for your webstat or your controller to reboot, go ahead and change your IP settings. Right click on your wireless bar, Open Network and Sharing Center. You can also go to here, type in Open Network and Sharing Center as well. I recommend plugging in your webstat to your computer through the network cable first. And you can click on local area connection or change adapter settings. And then click local area connection. Choose properties. IPv4. And then obtain IP address automatically. And click back on there so it's all cleared out. 
We made the website address 10.172.44.22. So for our computer, we need to make it similar but not the same. So 10.172.44.23 for your computer. We need to have the same subnet mask that we gave um, the, uh, the web stat. So it's 255.255.255.255. .255 .255. Dot one nine two. Since we're connected directly to the web stat, there's no gateway in between, so we don't need to add a gateway. And we don't need to worry about a DNS server at this point either, so just hit OK. And OK. And close. Now we want to make sure that we, the address did stick to our computer. So click on your Windows icon, choose CMD for command prompt, enter, and choose ping, P-I-N-G 10.172. Dot forty four dot twenty three, and we do have replies. That's good. Now let's see if we can connect to our web stat, which is twenty two, and we're getting replies as well. Once you get replies from both your computer and your web stat, you can open up a browser. And go ahead and type in your IP address, 10.172.44.22. 10 and now you have access to your web stat.